So here's the matrix that we're looking at, the associated eigenvalues that we found before, and corresponding eigenvectors, which you should have found by computing the corresponding eigenvectors. And so now let's compute what f, and f meaning the square root of a, so what is f of, sorry, f of the diagonal matrix d associated to these eigenvalues? This is taking the square root of each of the corresponding entries on the diagonal. So it's just 2 and 4. And the matrix P is writing down these two eigenvectors. So it's just 1, negative 1, 1, 1. Its corresponding inverse is, the determinant here is 2. So it's 1 half. And then the rest of this matrix, we swap and we negate. So that's the corresponding inverse of this matrix. So what happens when we compute P F of D, P inverse? Supposedly, we should get the square root of our matrix, which means that if we square it, then we get back our matrix A. So if we multiply some of these out, I'll skip some of the steps. So if we take 1 half, when we multiply P with f of d, we get 2, 4, negative 2, 4. And then we also have p inverse still here. I've already pulled that 1 half out. And multiplying these matrices out, we get, well, that distributes out. So we can just have 1, 2, negative 1, 2. And when we multiply those, we get 3. 1, 1, 3. So let's check that if we square this matrix, so let's, um, let's just call this f of a. This is the definition that we gave of f of a. So what happens when we square this matrix? f of a squared, we get exactly 10, 6, 6, 10. So we do get our original matrix back. So this is one way of computing the square root of a matrix, or at least if it has positive eigenvalues, um, by computing the corresponding eigenvectors and eigenvalues. And supposedly we have another way of doing this. And the interesting thing about the following method is that we will not be able, we will not need to use the corresponding eigenvectors. All we need to use are the corresponding eigenvalues. And we'll find that polynomial that allows us to compute the square root of this matrix. So how do we do that? For the time being, what we'll first do is we'll find a polynomial Q such that Q of lambda 1 equals the square root of lambda 1, or F of lambda 1 and q of lambda 2 equals f of lambda 2. So in this case, these are the square roots, and we already know exactly what their values are. This is 2, and this is 4. So what we're trying to do at this point, now we're doing a different problem, it seems like, because now we're just trying to find a polynomial that interpolates these two values of a function. So what we're trying to do is, so here's lambda 1. Here's lambda 2. And we have a function, which is just the square root. And we know that f applied to lambda 1 is 2. And f of lambda 2 is 4. Now, this is not drawn to scale in any way. But what we're trying to do is a find a polynomial that goes through these two points. Now, you know that two points determine a line. So a straight line goes through these two points. And that straight line is of the form y equals mx plus b. So our goal is to find out what are m and what are b such that when we plug in x, which is our values of lambda, we get the corresponding values of y. So this isn't a very difficult problem. But what we're going to do is set it up as a linear algebra problem, even though you could probably immediately solve for m and b. And the reason we'll do that will be made more apparent later when we try to compute f of matrices of larger sizes where it will be more difficult to do the simpler method and it's more reasonable to solve that 
system of linear equations using techniques of linear algebra. So when we set this up, we write on this side, since this is our y, we have m lambda 1 plus b, and this equals m of lambda 2 plus b. And our unknowns are m and b. So if we set up our matrix system, we get, and what I'll do for convenience is I'll put the ones on the left. So I'll put my b's on the left column. So it's really b plus mx. 1, 1, and then this is lambda 1, lambda 2, and our two corresponding values, f of lambda 1, which in this case is 2, and 4. And we know what lambda 1 and lambda 2 are. They are 4 and 16. So really, this is equal to 1, 4, 1, 16, 2, 4. And if we try to row reduce this system and solve it, what we end up getting is b equals 4 thirds and m equals 1 sixth. So this line is of the form y equals 4 thirds plus 1 sixth x. And that's our polynomial. This is our q of x. And what we'll do in the next video is we will actually apply this polynomial to our matrix and see if it also satisfies the same equation.